Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School! Oh, this week we're going to do a forgotten gem, 2009's Mary and Max. Come play along. Uh, let's all have a chocolate hot dog while we watch this movie. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, everybody, I am Adam Sherlock. And I'm Adam Pulcher. And if you like what you see slash here, please like and subscribe. You can find us all the spaces and places that people find good media. Um, this is uh, one of a few things that we do sometimes at the end of a festival yes. where we actually do... It's been a, a while. It has been a while since we've done a Forgotten Gem. And um, we really try to do these with movies that we feel like either got some not notoriety and then just got pushed along because there's so much damn stuff out there or that just a lot of people didn't talk about enough. And I feel like mm -hmm. that Mary and Max is one it fits that, perfect. that people don't talk, have not talked about enough, even though it, it did, did it win an Academy Award? I'm not sure. Um, it, the, it's originally, it's directed by Adam Elliott, who is, I believe from Australia. Yeah, he and is. Mary in the, in the movie is from Australia. So yes. this is based off a true story, by the way. I, I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually was reading an interview. Adam Elliott is such an interesting guy. Uh, he makes these things that he refers to as uh, clay, clayographies, um, which he, he's done, I want to say, five or six of them that are these... Uh, with the exception of Miriam Max, which is the only feature that he's ever, ever done. Too all, bad. All the rest of them are shorts that mm -hmm. are all animated. He's the one who creates all the stop motion animation. He's the one who films all of it. He's the one who builds all the sets. He's the one who does all, everything, uh, as well as writing the scripts and directing it. I can't believe this is a true story. And and he actually is the one. So there is not a Mary. He's Mary. He's yeah, Mary. I figured. I yeah. figured, yeah. And, and the, he's like, I do have a pen pal. Luckily, he is still alive. Spoiler alert. But um, but he is very, very large. He's from New York. He's Jewish. And he has Asperger's. Yes. And so it really was. And he did find him randomly uh, as a pen pal. Uh, just like found him in the Love phone it. book and sent him off a letter. And they've been friends ever since. And so that's where the story came from. But pen each, pals is a foreign thing these days. I it is a very old timey thing. Your, yeah, your pen pal. I remember being, you know, trying. I think it was something that you get assigned in school. Almost. Yeah, I had a pen pal um, uh, in like fifth grade that lived in. I Idaho. can't even remember where my pen pal was. Ohio, mm -hmm. something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Japan. I, 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 I don't know. I could have be not. Ohio. Could be Japan. <laughs> If you remember Palter, please write <laughs> yeah, in. Write yeah. back. But just do it through email, um, which is my point. It's like, this is just not a thing that exists. And if yeah. it does, it, it happens in like a second. Well, right? it reminds like, me. Like, this relationship would be, it would seem like catfishy at well, this point, right? Re re you remember <laughs> that song, you know, it's a little over a decade old now, but that <clears throat> uh, Arcade Fire song, We Used to Wait. Right, we used to wait for letters to arrive, right? And when a letter would arrive, you felt like it was the greatest day of your life, right? Yeah, like reflector. Yeah. You would just you would hang out and wait for that letter to show up. And and that's really what the, a lot of this movie is about. Again, Adam Elliott, I feel like should be way bigger than he is. Uh, that's why I said it's a shame he hasn't gone on to do other things cuz this is a extremely effective movie. The fact that he did it at stop motion is really fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, his casting choices, um, Tony just, Collette. The, just the style. Yeah. And like, honestly, she's really only in like the last 20 minutes. Like yeah. she's not in it a lot. Uh, Philip uh, Sumer Hoffman, but PS Hoffman. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty underrated. PS Hoffman performance. Completely. Yeah. And he, I, he falls into this character. Like don't completely. Even know and in. I, it blew me away to find out in my research of this movie that he did everything over Skype. Yep. I was they like, never are met you in person. kidding me? Him and Adam Elliott never met in person. And I was just like, <clears throat> wow, you nailed it. And completely. you know, he's from New York. I'm sure he knows a guy like he's Max. Jew he's Jewish. Uh, like, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he knows a guy. So I'm sure it was an easy thing for him to replicate, but just the performance alone of really like, getting into this character like i truly think this is an underrated ps hoffman performance i completely agree like with that. um you you worry about max you fall in love with max you can see where he's coming from and just coming into this movie not knowing it's about someone with asperger's 
like that's kind of like a part of it where you're just like oh that's this this is now a great movie yeah right it's like oh this is a cute like i get the back and forth this girl and you know she's what eight years old yeah. lives in australia having this relationship has with a, a birthmark four- on her forehead that looks like a piece of poop yeah and yeah. she has this relationship with this old jewish man in new york like i i get it i see why this was made a movie this is great and then you start really understanding and this is to the point that we've talked about in past stop motion things is once you put yourself in that world you can start talking about dark things yeah and this animation uh it's very different than all the others that we've done in this thing there's almost like a california raisins thing going on here it is it has a way more uh art uh ardman uh uh animation style it has that like uh late 70s early 80s animation style and like the drippiness of things and like the everything's droopy everything's yeah. droopy mm-hmm. yeah for sure but like it's so fun to watch and these characters are so pure mm-hmm. because they're lonely right and like whether it's this little girl or this old man who has Asperger's who doesn't you know who's and he doesn't seem this big when in the in the movie but he's like 380 pounds or something yeah, there's like he's like a massive yeah. guy well, which if you saw uh, someone that large in real life, it would be like, but like the way they compare him to the other, you know, like size wise to other people, he doesn't seem that big. Like that's big a person. Well, I think the other part is that, you know, and it's something that comes up over and over again, much later in the film. Um, but once you realize it's the theme, everything that's happened before makes sense, yes. which is I've, I love you and I forgive you because you're not perfect and I'm not perfect. And it's us not being perfect together that makes us great. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, that really is the theme of the movie. And because there's big gaps in the relationship, there's big gaps. And I think because Max in a lot of ways realizes he can't change and, and all he can really do is understand more fully that he can't change, right? He he becomes more self-actualized in realizing that he can't change. And meanwhile... Just based off of her letters. Yeah. And she does ask some pretty big questions because she's seven. Yeah. And she doesn't know or have anyone to ask those questions to. And so him taking on the brunt of some of those questions truly affects him, well, changes him. And I think that while he is kind of this... Is, is in this state of inertia uh, because he's older, because of his Asperger's, because of all these different things. That state of inertia, even though he is learning more, he isn't necessarily changing. No. And she goes from seven to, you know, th- 35. Good like, point, good point. This arc. He's already who he is. She's, yeah. She's changing. But yeah, Overeaters she, Anonymous isn't doing anything for, no, for Max. No, he just goes, <laughs> but it's not helping anything because his favorite thing is chocolate hot dogs. <laughs> There's these, the one thing that makes this movie very different than any of the other stop motion movies that we did is rather than there being just one storyline arc, which there is here, there are also these wonderful flights of fancy. Tons of them, yeah, great. And these little skits that take place that are so funny. About their little idiosyncrasies, right? Like some, About their yeah. little idiosyncrasies or interesting things that happen in their lives. Yeah. But they're these visual gags in which the stop motion leans very heavily into that. And I appreciate that's here because it makes it so refreshing and funny and weird in its own way. It is, and it's like... Just it, it, a lot of it is just the little trivialities of life, right? There's not, like you said, some major theme other than life. Like, this is life is happening to me, but like, you know, just her describing her mom as wobbly, yeah, you exactly. know, like something like that. Yeah. Drunk mom again, just like there zucchini, yep, yep. Um, um, but you know, she's also a thief and a disappointment and just uh, just wasted all the time, yep. Um, you know, and the, their connection at first is like these noblets because they have all of these friends. Yeah. Right? Which the is noblets. like, uh, and I love TV shows inside of a movie. Like yeah. The, it's, it's like the Smurfs kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. they all have friends and these two lonely people connect to these noblets because they have this huge support system, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the, There's like, so the, many more friends than you could ever need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like overwhelming amount of friends when it comes down to, they, they don't really 
want that. Or at least he doesn't. She may grow into that or get over that to some degree. But, but she's also but paranoid she, in her own ways. Yeah. Like, they're both very paranoid people. They're both people who mm-hmm. uh, know other people who have problems like agoraphobia, like, you know... Uh, uh, Again, the, the the Asperger's thing and just, like, this sense of, like, I don't want to be around anybody, you know? But the question she's asking, like, you know, people have funny names. I want to know what they look like. What color hair do they have? Mm-hmm. All these just, like, basic, playful curiosities that you have as a kid where someone with Asperger's would completely understand why you're asking that question. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and the questions that he asked back asks back are just as childlike and beautiful <laughs> in their own funny ways where he's just, like... I love kumquats. I yeah. just love the word. What words do you like? With you know, like the, it's so where babies perfect. come from is by far the funniest part of the movie. Even though there's tons of funny, charming stuff oh, in it's it, it's ridiculous. But when he's explaining where babies come from, she was told they come from the bottom of a beer, bo- a beer, uh, a beer glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is hilarious on its own. Oh yeah, we're like, oh yeah, could, you have shitty parents. Like, that oh, told they, you no, that. they come from either rabbis, uh, nuns, or if you're atheist, uh, dirty prostitutes. That's right. <laughs> Some of my other favorite they lay eggs. Some of my other f- favorite flights of fancy are the uh, her dad's taxidermied birds. Yeah. Um. Uh. Max's poor goldfish who always dies unexpectedly. Oh, there's at least twenty of them. There's like twenty of them. <laughs> um. The mime that gets killed by Max's air conditioner later. That whole bit is so damn funny. His, his list of jobs. Uh. You know, a trash man. He was a veteran, and oh yeah, I was also a communist. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was a member of the communist body. <laughs> um uh his neighbor Ivy uh who later when he wins the lottery and gives her a bunch of money and she kills herself in a horrible jetpack <laughs> accident. Right. Um and then we have to mention he does uh have a flight of fancy where he goes to a desert island and it it gives us our second claymation penis in this festival. Hmm. I don't know if you remember that. And Melissa being the first. That's that's right. So we have two Claymation penises in this festival. Yes, slow clap for can, penises. Can you name another podcast that does that? Yeah, come on, it brings you brings you that many claymation penises. Quality. Um, and then finally, the rogue wave that carries away Mary's dad uh, while he's doing his uh, 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 metal detecting is also brilliant. Yes. But I just like, again, those little skits that happen in between the kind of breakup yeah, the main story are just brilliant. The, the back and so forth well of, of these two people who are just trying to get to know each other. But yeah, you have like the neighbor who has homophobia. Oh yes, which, uh, which is amazing. Not agoraphobia. No. Homophobia, oh, which because means you don't home. want to leave your home. They don't want to leave their home. Yeah, <laughs> he's just homophobic. These, which again <laughs> had to be hilarious for Adam Elliot, who was gay. Completely. Like oh, he's yeah, like, he's an out gay man, and so that had to have been like <laughs> right genius. But just, and then later she marries a man who's obviously gay. Yes. Like in, in college he has on a Boy George shirt and she's like, look at my wedding dress. Isn't it beautiful? He made it for me. And I'm like, oh God, That's your okay. husband. That's not a good sign. Yeah, your husband made your wedding dress. Well, the it's thing. Not a great sign. We, we have to talk about the thing that sets Max off. Yes. Um, that puts him, you know, I'll let you get into it, but she gets into some sexy details and asks some pretty questions that he is not ready for. Like, a very uh, hard question to answer, can you explain love? Well, You I, know, I like th- something like that. I think that it is But he such... goes into a full-blown anxiety attack. Yeah, well, I mean, it's so... I think it's such a perfect... You know, like, yeah, you could you could go, okay, this little girl from another country reaches out to this guy who's very lonely and and has you could easily go creepy here and it well or you could go creepy or you could go too over the top maudlin uh uh emotionally like and then mm. like she she opened him up and then he he found He's love and forever. realized all these things no, and it's like yeah. no he has Asperger's he has a particular thing he has facial blindness he can't see like what people are, he has a woman as Overeaters Anonymous thing that's trying to hook up with him the whole time. And he's like, I, it gives me panic attacks. So I love the realism, even though this movie is not realistic. This movie goes a hundred different places of these flights of fancy. What's realistic is her letters, while he loves them, also cause him to have panic attacks that lead him to be institutionalized for eight months, right? Because he can't. It's too much. It's 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 sensory overload, yeah. even though it's just a letter. And he has to 
find ways to try and deal with it. And well, I love that there that that's a subplot here is that like he has his little bottle of Valium. Well, right, and they he, don't he even... needs to take them in order to keep reading her letters. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Like, I'm like, that's it's realistic. Would, that's for sure. very realistic. Yeah. At the same time, they don't tell us till halfway through the movie that he actually has Aspergers, right? We just know there's <laughs> something. Going but yeah, on. yeah, you, you, you definitely pick up. <laughs> you're just like, happening. okay, he's on the spectrum somehow. Yeah, like, yeah, I, he's he, touched. He, somehow, yeah, like yeah. he's he's definitely got some specific things. Um, and a lot of times, and this is just a direction thing. But um, I love how when we go through these flights of fancy, it's people, it's almost, it's, it's being narrated through the most part. Even when you see a character that should be saying something in a scene. Or narrating. Or narrating, yeah. which maybe is an animation trick there where you're like, hey, I don't have to spend five days doing yeah, this. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Let's I just have just, it be narrated. Yeah, we don't have to lip sync anything So, so I this. thought that was kind of interesting that a lot of the stuff is really just them reading the letters. And the and the narrator is, uh, what is the actress name? It's uh, uh, Dame Edna. Um, I can't think of the actual uh, actress. Edna Mole? Yeah, so the actual actor's name uh Barry Humphreys, who is a, oh, he's you know, the narrator. He's a comedian. Yeah, yeah, he's an Australian yeah. actor. But but his his main alter ego, uh, if you've watched the BBC a lot, is Dame Edna Everidge. Where it's it's he's he's in drag with these big, mm. like dark red curly like like uh, uh, locks of hair on the sides. And he's Dame Edna with like the big I've seen uh, it, yeah. cat eyed. I don't think glasses. I put that together, but yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, that's what uh, Barry Humphreys does when he's not doing like classic narrations. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like, you know, Adam Elliott like pulled out all the stops. He's like, I mean, the, her husband is, is Eric Bana. Yeah. Like, I mean, he obviously just went and, and which apparently he was like, they're like, well, how did you get Bana? And he was like, well, he lives down the street from me. You know, he just like immediately was like, nah, I've, I've known that guy. Since I just like, asked him. Yeah, I just asked him. He said, hey, yeah, I'd love to. And so like, you know, I think, and I think the same thing was true with uh, Tony Collette. Um, which Australian as well, yeah. I forgot until I was doing that research that Tony Collette's even Australian. Yeah, she's brilliant. Because she's a fucking chameleon. She is. She's, she's one of our greatest actors of our you. generation. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. I completely forgot she was Australian because yeah, I'm like, cause she's when's that good. the last time I've heard her do an Australian accent? Maybe in an interview a decade ago? I don't Love know. Her. I'll anyway, watch anything she's in. Same here. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, that narration really does carry us through this movie uh, by Barry And sometimes Humphreys. it's them, and sometimes it's Mary, and sometimes it's Max, and sometimes it's Barry. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, Tony Collette, unless she maybe plays the mom or something, she might have done that. No, um, I think you're right. She's just um, in this last. It's really like we half. don't. Yeah. It's really more about like I would say 75 percent of the movie. Mary is pretty childish, or like going through college or mm-hmm, something like that, mm-hmm. right? And you know, going through, and she ends up kind of turning into her mom. Right. Well, because but, she at first. But let's talk about why why yeah. she goes down that spiral. Well, because at first she really, you know, I think that the 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 poop birthmark is such a great symbolic part of 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 how she thinks it kills herself her her self confidence. But as she grows up, she thinks this is something. If I can change this everything else will work out for me, right? Like, this is the thing. Yeah. And when she gets rid of it, she does get a ton more confidence. It does. It works. But then she goes, all right, I'm going to go to school to try and help Max because maybe I can cure him of his ailment. And that gives her even more confidence, and she moves forward with that, and she writes this book, about Max. About Max, and he is furious when he finds out. And I love what he does. I love that he breaks off the M from his typewriter. It took which, me a minute to get why he did that. Which, by obviously. the way, that Underwood miniature typewriter fully functional. was fully functional. I read that. In fact, they did, and God, I wish I could see this, in 2010, um, in, I think, one of the Australian art galleries... They had a, a whole exhibit about Mary and Max showcasing all the things that Adam Elliott had built, including the fully functional typewriter and hand-blown glass goblets 
and wine glasses and all these tiny miniature things. I mean, the made. details here are outstanding. Uh, and, uh, and if hand you... wired, hand wired um, light bulbs. So he had built his own tiny light bulbs for these scenes that all still worked. Again, the 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 magic of stop motion. Yeah, right? the ma- the craftsmanship of miniatures. Yeah, but the fact that unlike you know your Ardmans or or like any of these others, the fact that like this isn't. A, a whole workshop. This is like one dude and probably a couple of people. He I didn't hired. realize he did it all himself. That's wild. Yeah, I mean, I think the movie took five years to make. And so I'm sure he had a crew that, but I mean, you can, but that's also the difference is like Coraline is gorgeous and I won't take anything away from the art sure. design, but it feels you got a whole team of people. It feels like a, like here is a team of people Let's and here's show the off. design, mm-hmm. right? Which, yeah, it's great. But here it does each character feels like this is made by one guy. It well, feels like that, you, right? Now that you say it, yeah, I can totally see it. I mean, you have these little details plus that flight of fancy. Yeah. And wow. And then then you throw in his troubles um, with Asperger's and everything. And honestly, like, so before we get to the part you're talking about where she writes the book and, right. yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and he finds out about it, when she asks these sexy questions about what is love, it, like he overwhelms himself. He like she doesn't hear from him for years, like a long at time. Least, at least a year or um, two, yeah. And so much happens to him in that time. Like he goes to the crazy house. He gets electroshock he's in, therapy. Yeah, he's institutionalized. He gets yeah. manslaughter charges. Yeah. <laughs> what against a mime? Yeah, um, and, and he wins One the lottery. One of my favorite sequences. He wins the lottery. He wins the lottery. Like all of this major shit happens to him, and we yeah. just kind of like this stuff keeps happening. And then we go back to her, and she has no idea. And then she's old enough. He gets to that. You know, they start becoming friends closer again. Like he, it takes him a long time to respond to that. What is love? Yeah, message. And then you know he finds out about her writing a book about yeah. him which on her she should have fucking asked him <laughs> probably i mean that's uh, ethics yeah that's, that's ethics. pretty basic probably like, should have done courtesy that. so yeah, yeah understand why he's pissed mm-hmm. um but that puts him over another edge yep um you know and now he's rich and famous too so it's just like and then she... what do you do and the thing about max that is so lovable about max he's like i love being an aspie Mm-hmm. It's my. It's how he identifies himself. He has himself. a T-shirt and everything. Yeah, yeah. He's an. He calls himself an Aspie. Yeah. And here are some of the characteristics of being some of the an traits. Aspie. Yeah, of being an Aspie. Yeah, and I do not like birds. He does not like trash. No, he, he does hates not like fucking trash. lettering. I do not like <laughs> loud noises, and I do not recognize faces. Um, yeah, all of that is like again so brilliant, and I love that. All she gets in the mail as she's getting ready to head off on her book tour is... Literally getting into the taxi. <laughs> is that broken off M? Mm-hmm. And she knows exactly what it means. And the next scene, she... she She's her mother. Pulverize, well, the next scene, she pulverizes all of her books. Right? And we get... I love these little, like... Where it's like, here's the newspaper of a thing that happened. Where it's sure. like, man is what, what's the? I mean, it's terrible. The one that's like the, uh, well, I don't even want to say it. The R word. Uh, uh, our our man is uh, 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 cleared of of all wrongdoing and and slaughter of mime or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like. Yeah, I guess it was the '80s. They would print that on it, like that's <laughs> you're right. But like, also, Asperger's is no longer like a official not, term. Yeah, right? it's yeah. not. The, it's not the same thing. Yeah, at all. yeah. But but like you know, there's a bunch of those, and this one says, um, you know, young, uh, 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 you know, uh, fantastic scientist gives up career and book deal or whatever, and she turns into her mom because she she realizes how guilty she feels that she said that she wanted to try and fix Max, you know? And, and and I think it just breaks her heart. Completely. Well, and she did it out of the good of her heart, right? Yeah. You know, the fact that this story and their relationship and where it went and what they found out about each other, like, this would have been a good movie if it was just that. Yeah. But the fact that it got this far and she made a book about it and, like, it was that meaningful of a relationship 
and impactful much of a relationship all from a pen pal. Yep. That's crazy yeah. to think about. Well, and I think also that... Of the, a person who is completely opposite of her, right? Yet identical to her. To some degrees. No, I think to a lot of degrees. I, I Do you think, think is, he, he's probably more emotionally like a seven-year-old? Well, I, I think that's part of it. But I think the other part of it is that he spent his whole life feeling like he needed to apologize for who he was mm -hmm. until he realized that he didn't because he had a condition and he understood it. And he said, here is how I see the world. And he was able to help her. It wasn't the other way around. Like it, she definitely goes in the dumps though. But this is what I'm saying. She thought she could help him and it actually took him to help her. Like that he's the one that was like, actually we're all broken and we're all fucked up. And like, you can't fix that. It's just who you are. Yeah. And he forgives her. And, and that that's the most important thing that could have ever happened to her. Since they're all the noblets, right? Then he does. <laughs> um, Literally, as she's about to hang herself to K. Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> that is a dark ass moment. <laughs> I know you're just like dark, oh, dark, dark. Like she's doing cocaine. She like has gone off the deep end, all because she feels horrible to what she did to her friend. Yep, and her husband leaves her uh, for the sheep herder. Sure, yeah, that but doesn't help. The homophobic neighbor does come out of the. He's the one that saves closet. her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finally got over his homophobia <laughs> yeah and 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 comes out and is the one that tells her and although i i was a little like even when she's like oh all the noblets are here because he sent them all to me i was like okay throw up the valium you took a whole <laughs> yeah. fistful of valium and and we got it this was this weird, clay don't worry and we got this weird reveal that she's pregnant and i'm like okay let's Barf up that Valium now. like That's true. But then, like, when she shows up later, I'm like, okay, she's fine. But there was that, like, I, I and, and I have to say, watching it again, for just a, a hot second, I was like, I don't remember how this movie ends. And I was like, she's fine, right? Like, nothing, it's been years since I've seen it. Like, she's mm -hmm. okay, right? And she is. But for just a second, I was like, because... But she the, shows up to finally meet him. When the movie goes to so many different places you don't think it's going to. I was like, I would remember if she died. She doesn't die. I'm surprised because this is a pretty fucking perfect ending. It really is. <laughs> like, like if you think about everything they've gone through, she finally shows up to meet him in person. He Obviously, on the book tour, they were supposed to meet too. Yeah. That never happened. Yep. So this is a lifetime. And um, he's been telling earlier about how he figures out how to read her letters, he keeps that value. He laminates by his them. Side. He laminates them. He saves them. Reads them. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a very uh, uh, metered response to reading her letters. And so we get that earlier on. Now, now finish what you're saying. But. Yeah, just it's it's just beautifully ties a bow around their whole relationship. She shows up with her baby, yeah, and wants you know Max to meet her and all that stuff. And it's supposed to be a beautiful moment, and she finds him dead, um, sitting with his head up, like he just fell asleep, right? And never got to meet him in real life, other than that. And then she looks up. It sees all of her letters on the ceiling laminated. And you're just like, you were my best friend. <laughs> and it's just like, he, he, and he, he, the guy who couldn't cry, the guy who couldn't smile, um, died smiling. With a big smile on his face. Yeah. Beautiful. Fucking beautiful. Um, if and, and he has this great quote at the end. God gave us relatives. Thank God we can choose our own friends. Exactly. <laughs> Which exactly. I, I was like, holy shit, do you have to tie more bows onto this beautiful oh movie? God. So, um, lovely. Lovely film. But, completely forgotten gem. Final thought, and I want to toss this over to you. Uh, tell me what your thoughts are about the color palette. 
I, I was going to ask you about so this. So unique. I feel it like it's very gives interesting because it, it's mostly black and white or gray for the like. With, I would say eighty percent of it. Reds here, but and there, yeah, bright. It's oranges. really interesting. What I was going. I meant to ask you this too because yeah. the things they choose to color. Yeah. You know, it's not like Schindler's List with the the girl in the in the red. No, it's in the red. It's you actually, know, it's like the the things that are personal to them. Maybe. Um, it's way more like Sin City. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, it's actually very true. But like, like the his tongue, cap, the pom the tongues. I definitely noticed yeah. the mouths are always the. But his, you know, just little things. Even in the flights of fancy parts, they just choose little things. Well, and that's his, what makes his, it so unique. His world is black and white, and her world is like dry sepia tone. Yeah. And when she comes to New York, she's still sepia toned <laughs> in a black and white world. Interesting. I don't which think I, I noticed that. I thought was so brilliant. But love like, it. It does make it, it's like the final fingerprint on top of everything else. That's the kind of thing where I'm like, the ballsiness to do that, where you're like, it's all clay. It could be the most vibrant, colorful thing on the planet. And he's like, black and white. Life is tone. gray. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty brilliant. Um, I love it. Yeah. Um, so glad to revisit this movie. Completely. Truly a forgotten gem. Um, we need to do more of these because there's a lot of those out there. Oh, indeed. Um, indeed. And this is, you know, I think Ice Storm is one of our most popular episodes, and that was probably one of the last forgotten gems we did. But, like, something along those being lines. Being there might be one. But, like, uh, again, these no, movies yeah. that, like, are amazing, and we just don't talk about them anymore yeah. because there's so much stuff out there. But Absolutely. Man, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. I hope you played along with the festival. We've had yes. such a good time. Can't wait to get into our next festival. We are going to do it. Are we going to do it? We're going to do it. Nick Cage Fest, baby. Woo! <laughs> we're still, uh, like, we were outside, like, arguing about what they were going to be. Not arguing, but, like, discussing. <laughs> the possibilities oh, are endless. the possibilities are I think are we want to get weird. But, I think we want to get weird, too. Uh, but, 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 but with some also classics. <laughs> yes. I mean, they're all classics. That's true. He's just a classic person. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, One of a kind. But thank you very much, everyone, for playing along. We'll talk to you next week. Um, Like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye, you guys. (laughs) 